Okay, so as um, you know, we have, we have planned, we're gonna talk about the risk management plan today. But before I jump into what 14971 requires, I wanna take a step back and put this into context for you. Because you know, when you read the standard clause by clause, uh, it is not sequential, even though it seems like it's sequential, and we have to learn the relationships, the interactions of different elements. That is important. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how the risk management plan fits into the overall risk management system. And if you look at clause four, you will, you will learn that it is part of the risk management system, but the relationships are not that obvious. So obviously in the middle of everything is our risk management process, right? That's what we do. Risk management process, we go through risk analysis, risk evaluation, risk controls, additional risk controls, final risk evaluation, and then we uh, end up with a risk management report, right? But how does it all fit together? That's a process. Before it can start, we need management responsibility to be clearly defined, and that's in 4.2. They will assign competent personnel who would set up the risk management plan, right? So all those pieces have to be in place first before we jump into the risk management plan. And risk management plan is very focused and very targeted for the particular product that you are working with or a family of products. It doesn't have to be only one product. It can be a family of products if they are sufficiently similar in their intended use and technological characteristics. So it's up to us to decide how to define that. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And then once you execute your process, the output of that process is the risk management file. So this is how the whole system fits together and risk management plan is a very important part of that. Right? That is why we focus on it so much. Okay, so we're gonna go through clause 4.4 today in these slides. And again, this has to be, this doesn't have to be like a you know, top-down approach or clause by clause approach, although I will present all the information to you. Uh, let's have a discussion about this if you have any questions or comments or, or if you come across any difficulties in your particular system. Okay, so the risk management plan, plan uh, what is it first of all? And why do we care? Right? Everything has to begin with planning. It's a planning document that defines the scope, activities, methods, criteria, and responsibilities needed to manage all the risks associated with a medical device throughout its life cycle. So that's a key word, right? That means plan is not one and done plan has to be updated throughout the product life cycle. And that's one place where we struggle a lot. And I'll talk about that uh, in this discussion today because I'm gonna present you to you an optional eighth element that I include in my templates, which is not required by 14971. But that optional element actually will help you to manage the risk management plan. All right, so why do we need a plan? That's the first thing. Planning is required because it helps us to do things in an organized way. And that actually is directly related to the probability of success with what we want to do. And that links to effectiveness. So remember, effectiveness of the risk management system and process is one of the elements that top management is supposed to review. If you don't have good planning, you're probably not being very effective. It provides a roadmap of specific risk management activities in sufficient detail for anybody to follow and execute. Objectivity in risk evaluation, why? Because we are setting the rules of the game up front. We are defining how we will, est how we will estimate risk and evaluate risk. What is acceptable, what is not, before we start doing our risk analysis and evaluation. So rules of the game are set. Now along the way, we may find that, hey, we don't, meet the criteria. But rules are same. If you want to change the rules, you have to think very hard because that's a change in the plan. But rules should be set up front. Higher chances of mistake-free execution for all required elements because everybody will know what is supposed to be done and the right people are doing the work. Continuity throughout the device life cycle because it has to continue to exist over the device's life cycle. In post-market, you might have many design changes, for example and that should become part of your plan. Further, it helps you demonstrate device-specific execution of risk management activities for EU MDR, IVDR compliance. This is your device-specific execution, and it, could, it is the way to show that you have done 
in the 14971 framework which is general in nature and you are showing specific execution to a particular product through this plan okay so here are the seven required elements and i have mapped them to different clauses of 14971 the first one is scope maps directly to clause 4.1 and we'll talk about each one of them in uh, a slide by itself responsibilities and authorities they map to 4.2 and 4.3 Review of activities, clause 4.2 and 9. Acceptability criteria, 4.2, 6, and 7.3. Methods for overall residual risk in clause 8. This is a new requirement for the risk management plan in the 2019 revision. And then verification in clause 7.2 of two things. Implementation of risk controls and verification of effectiveness of risk controls. These are two different things and we need to provide documented evidence of both and we'll talk about that in just a minute production and post-production in clause 10 now this mapping is my mapping it's not in 24 971 guidance document or 14 971 this is the way i like to view 14 971 requirements and this is the way i relate my planning process to different clauses uh, so this is probably uh, one way of looking at things i'm sure there are more than one ways and i always clarify to people that hey this is not required for you to do it in this way. This is just one way.